different design but in the second you need we call it this is combination method in the first condition structure and design one we already understood how to design tension method so i'm going to give you brief review of tension methods or uh, just a revision of this first unit in the first unit we have seen design flow process then we have seen many of the sections which are used as a tension method so what are the sections we use as a tension method the third we see permissible stresses and safety factors then fourth we visited or we are uh, understood connections then types of connections then fifth we learn modes of failure numericals based on all the theory facts all right the under the numericals we have gone through a bunch of numericals consists of connections and how the connection plays how to design a connection how to find the ultimate strength of any connection and in our design part we have understood how to design tension member how to overcome the modes of failure i hope you remember all this part this is your first unit which i completely uh, finished through the screen recording and here we have a videos now i am going to focus on compression method Absolutely. 
place in the network. Then all the forces are exactly passing through this longitudinal axis of your member. But it is never occur in that way. Many of the time, this compressive forces come along with bending movement. I'm saying, I'm repeating it. If you are saying this compression member, which is of experiencing compressive force, a compressive force is a force which try to reduce or try to compress our member. If such a member, I'm saying purely axially rotating, purely axially compressing, then it should be uh, comes under the first category and it should carry all the forces to its axis. So all forces are passing through the axis of that member. But it never occurs like that. But it never happens like that. Why? Because this compressive forces are not exactly passing through the center, but they are acting eccentrically. What, what is that? They may get shifted from their longitudinal axis. They may get shifted from their longitudinal axis, and therefore we say the member is experiencing compressive in addition to that bending movement is also occurring into it. Or bending may occur into it. Purely axial uh, members in which pure axial compressive force is acting, those are the members which you see in your trusses. Where do you find axially loaded members? You will find axially compressive Okay. What I am saying, in the 
there is a bending moment acting across this section at its end. But if I am saying if it is experiencing complexing force only, then it is true if it is true or it is valid only if the magnitude of this end moment and the magnitude of this shear force is equal or they are equal. The magnitude of the moment or the moment acting across this plane and shear force acting at is equal. Then we can say that our column is purely experiencing axial formation and only this P applied force will be resist the shear force acting at A support. I hope you understood. So thing is, when we end movements, when we end movements are zero, when the end movements are zero, let's take again an example of truss. I have said that all these truss members are experiencing pure compression or pure tension. Why they are not experiencing bending moment? Because we assume that this joints, these joints are pin joint. These joints of all truss members are pin joint. And whenever they come across a pin joint, pin joint is the joint which allows rotation. It allows rotation. This is your pin joint and if, the, if you have provided pin over here, it will allow a rotation. And if rotation is allowed, the bending moment will be zero. Moment is what falls into perpendicular distance and it rotates. And then we double them. But if you are allowing uh, rotation, free rotation is allowed, then the bending moment or end moment at the ends of your truss member will be zero. In that case, the all compressive forces will pass through the axis of or longitudinal axis of your section. That's our first case. I hope you understood. To come across this first case, we need to understand that A moments are zero. How we will analyze A moments are zero? To check that, we should focus on the connection or we should focus on the what type of end condition is facing or experienced by our wall. If it is allowing free rotation at the end, then end moment will be zero. Then all the forces will pass through the longitudinal axis of your member and will experience axially loaded or will experience pure axial completion. But in second case, in this case, the end moments are not zero. End moments, in this case, end moments are not zero. If I am saying the moments are not zero, then compression plus bending moment will occur. That compression plus bending moment will occur. An example for that is B column connection. Example for that is beam column connection. So that's all about our combination member. I have made you understand how the combination member is experience compressive forces and how we classify them into two major categories. One in which pure compression occurs, one in which compression as well as the moment occurs. We want to deal with both of the types in our compression member design. You go through it. I will stop my lecture today.